Yeah. I was just listening to that beautiful song, but also realizing the difference between writing a talk and writing a song, because part of what he writes can be, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't get to put that into my talks most of the time. But, uh, you know, as, as uh, mentioned, our topic is uh, gifts of the Spirit, and the problem with that topic is not what to talk about, it's what not to talk about, of course, because since everything is gifts of the Spirit, you have to pull it back. Uh, and, and so I tried to think of some kind of criteria for what to talk about, and, and you know, there are some gifts that some of us get that others don't, um, like all of you get this spectacular gift of getting to hear me talk. Um, and that's a gift I don't get because I never listen to myself. It confuses me if I do that. So I thought what I'd concentrate on is, is simple gifts that we all get. Like I heard somebody talk about, um, I'm just thankful for every breath that I take. And I thought, there's a nice, simple one, because we just breathe in this oxygen, but it's really not so simple, because breathing is actually oxygenating our, our body. And what it really means is that we're burning oxygen to get energy, just like when we burn gas or wood, they're burning oxygen. We, we think that they get energy from the gas or the wood, but they actually get it from the oxygen. If you've seen an old blacksmith with their forge and they have the big bellows on it that blows in more air because more oxygen creates more energy in, in higher levels. So if we say breathe, what we really mean is that our lungs take in this oxygen from the air and then it goes into our bloodstream and it's taken to the cells and even though the cells are, are so small we can't see them there's a lot going on inside of them and so that oxygen molecule gets in there and another molecule strips an electron from it because that's where the energy comes from and then in a complicated process that I won't describe that <laughs> electron is moved through about eight different enzymes into another enzyme that captures it. And remember, these are very complicated machines. Sometimes they're contracting to move muscles. Sometimes another part of them is duplicating. Sometimes a part of them is causing them to contract or, or to uh, produce hormones. All of these different parts have to have energy. And so this one little enzyme acts as a battery. And whatever the, the cell is going to do at that time, it takes that electron over there to create the energy to do it. And so every breath we take, every time we breathe, many times a minute, what we have to be thankful for is all of the trillions of cells and all of the trillions of parts of each of those cells that are taking in that oxygen and processing it so that we can function. I thought, so that's really not that simple of a thing to be thankful for. So maybe instead we could be thankful just uh, for the air we breathe. We said, I'm just thankful for the air we breathe, but really then we have to be thankful for the air we eat as well. Uh, now I'm not talking about all those pollutants in the air, but uh, we eat plants, we eat vegetables and fruits and and uh, uh, grains and seeds, and we eat, some of us eat animals who eat plants. And so what happens in those plants, plants are made of carbon primarily, just as we are. And some of that carbon they pull up through their roots, but then it goes into the leaves, and you've all heard of photosynthesis. And in those leaves, air is taken in. And they use carbon dioxide, one part carbon and two part oxygen. And so they, through the energy of the sun, they take that carbon molecule off and they, and they spread the oxygen back to the air for us to breathe. And the other carbon that they have has five molecules of carbon in it. 
only they can't do anything with that. So they take that one molecule of carbon out of the air and they add it in so it has six and that becomes three comp compounds, two compounds with three pieces of, of molecules of carbon and everything in a plant is made from that. So that every time we eat an apple or we eat oats or anything we eat, we are also eating some carbon that came out of the air. So we have to be thankful for the air we breathe and the air we eat. So none of that's what I want to talk about. Because <laughs> it's way too complicated. So instead, I thought, well, let's, I'm, I'm just going to cut to the quick and talk about the greatest gift that we get from spirit. And I'm not going to be talking about myself. So I'm talking about the greatest gift we get from spirit. But to do that, I need to tell you a story. So relax, you're going to hear a story. I'm going to tell you a story about very ancient times in this ancient country. And, and there was this young boy born. And as he grew up, he was stronger than all of those around him. And, and as he grew, he was faster. And he just seemed to be better at things. And he was smarter. And he was more adept. And so as he grew within the, this tribe, this clan that he was in, he kept moving up, if you will, into the leadership of it. And as he became a young man, uh, he became the chief of the tribe eventually. But he had been taught by his parents to be very ambitious. And so he went to the wise men there and he said, well, I'm chief of the tribe, but what's even greater than that? And they said, well, there's many tribes around, and if you became king of all of those, that would really be great. And so he organized his army, and he was better than all of the other generals. And he went out, and he conquered the whole land. And so all of these different tribes that had been separate, now he was king of them. And he felt great, and he grew. Um, but eventually, it wasn't enough. His ambition was too strong. It wasn't enough. And so he went to his wise men, and he said, so what's greater than a king? And they said, well, the, the gods are greater than a king. And he said, well, what do the gods have? And they said, well, the gods own everything. The, the gods of the forest own the trees, and the, the gods of the harvest own the fields and the, the ranches, and, and the gods of the ground own the gold and silver and gems that we have. And so he went back and thought of that, and he said, I'll become the greatest God there is. And so he had a temple built. And he sent his soldiers out to the forest. And he said to, they said to, to the axemen and, and the, the woodsmen, they said, our king is now the greatest of the gods. And so he owns the forest. And every time you cut down trees, you have to give him some because he owns all of it. And these soldiers went to the farmers and the ranchers and said, the king has become the greatest god there is and you must give part of your harvest to him. And, and he went to all of the markets and the, the jewelers and said, our king is now the greatest god and you must give part of the jewels and the gold and the silver to him because he owns everything as the greatest god. And so eventually he had a, a young son himself who grew up, and though, even though he had made himself a god, he eventually grew old, and he was lying in the bed dying, and he took his, brought his son in and said, I made myself, I made myself the greatest god, and now as my son, you must carry that on. You must own everything and be the greatest god. And, then he passed away, and they buried him in this temple. And his son had been really protected all of his life. And he went to the temple, and, and he saw the people come in. But they didn't look sad that his father had died. And he noticed that there were soldiers 
making sure that they were all bringing things in. And, and so he, he disguised himself and he went around the kingdom and, and found out that nobody really cared for his father. Nobody worshipped or adored him. And all of the things they brought in, they brought in by force because the soldiers made them. And, and he didn't want that in his life. And so he paid the soldiers very generously and he sent them on his way and said, you know, I don't need soldiers anymore. And then the people were confused about it. And, and they weren't bringing things. And in fact, he saw that they needed things. So he started giving things away to people instead of keeping them. And over the years, all of the things that they had collected, he had given out to everyone. And, and then one day there was a, a great flood and some people's houses were, were washed away and there Lands And he said, well, here, we have this great mansion that I've been living in, and you can, and, and it has a lot of land. You can farm this and come and live in this mansion. And he went off and just lived in a shack. And, and then a, a, an old woman got sick, and he said, well, I don't have anything left to give to her, but I can give her my time and effort. And he went to help her and nurse her and get her well. And a, a farmer, uh, his horse had had gone lame and he was having trouble farming and he said, well, I don't have any horse anymore to give to him, but I can give my effort. And he went and helped him. And this is how he spent his years until eventually he too, as all men, passed away. And he had himself buried in a very simple grave, uh, but the people built a shrine there and they they went there and they took their kids and says, here was a truly great man. And, you know, this is our story. This is our story of our spiritual development. Because as we're born and raised, for so many of us, our parents tell us, if you want to be great, you have to get things. You have to have a big house, and you have to have lots of things. You have to have jewelry and fancy clothes, and you have to have a nice car, and that's what makes you a great person. And you have to get power. You have to, to get yourself in a position where you can order people around and tell them what to do and be a boss, and that's what makes you a great person. And this is what we're taught, and this is how we develop until at some point in our lives, we start to see things differently. And sometimes relatives or, or close friends pass away, and we look and, and say, what was left? We say, all of these things they gathered, they, they gained, is that what means something to me? Or was it, themselves and, and what they gave to other people. And we start seeing ourselves like that. I've noticed as we get older, anyway, most of us, uh, people say, well, what do you want for your birthday? And what do you want for Christmas? And it's like, you know, I've really got all the things I need. I don't need more things. I'm, I want to give away things. And we've learned that Giving of ourselves is what's important. And many of us here try to learn to become one with divine spirit. And we think, divine spirit, what is that known for? Is it known for what it takes? Do we say to divine spirit, thank you for the things you've taken from me? Or do we say to divine spirit, thank you for the things you've given? And if we want to be like divine spirit... We develop the greatest gift it has given to us. And that's the gift of giving of ourselves to others. Beautiful. Thank you.